Good morning from Kyrgyzstan, in the capital of Bishkek in Central Asia. Tourists normally come to Kyrgyzstan to see mountains, ride horses and enjoy the nature. But today we're going to have a walk through history in the 20th century of Kyrgyzstan when it was the Kyrgyz Soviet Socialist Republic and look at the lovely architecture that um, 80 years of socialism brought this country and in the first um, building is a factory a Soviet factory with a mosaic that says Tebe Rodina Nash Trud which translates to we labor for you our motherland very patriotic so join me in a uh, walk through Kyrgyzstan Soviet past Скажите, что это место? Это фабрика, где шьют, есть буфеты, есть. А, хорошо, фабрика, завод. Фабрика, завод, да. Хорошо, потому что Рикошпо на улице очень интересно. Ну, хорошо. Just had a chat with Babushka, and it's a, it's a uh, still a factory working, so I don't think uh, it would be very interesting to go in and have a walk around so yeah let's have a look around. let's uh, go to our next building which is that way and we wouldn't be in a post-soviet city without a big statue of Vladimir Lenin the man who overthrew the uh, Cyrus regime in 1917 and created the Soviet Union and incorporated Kyrgyzstan into the Kyrgyz Soviet Socialist Republic and he's still here after a hundred years. Here we have the Palace of Weddings. During uh, the Soviet Union, religious expression in any way was completely banned. Islam and Christianity were both um, frowned upon in this new workers' paradise. But people still got married by Soviet officials and they created this. The Palace of Weddings. It's to mimic a church or the grandiose of a mosque, but bear no religious iconography to uh, keep in line with new Soviet secular rules. And it's still in use today, as you can see. There's a, a wedding happening. So uh, congratulations, the new Kiergi uh, couple. These buildings is uh, something you'll see all across the post-Soviet Union and they are called Khrushchevkas named after Nikita Khrushchev or Nikita Khrushchev in English and they are um, simply low-cost uh, high-density apartments for the Soviet people uh, during a rapid urbanization uh, in post-war USSR in the 50s um, simply concrete and um, the same design for every room or every apartment made uh, quite low cost and you'll see them all across Russia, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan and um, yeah and another fact about them is uh, you see how many floors they are it goes up to the fourth floor that's because in Soviet um, city planning laws any building of over five stories um, has to have an elevator um, so you'll see a lot of buildings um, to cut costs will just simply be four or five stories so the um, city or the so the city can um, save money on not installing an elevator here we have um Oh, a very UFO shaped building and it says at the top Tserk Tserk means circus so the Bishkek Circus of course a Soviet war memorial 
dedicated to the Soviets who died defending the Rodina, the motherland, against the German fascist invaders. The interesting thing about this memorial, um, other than the eternal flame, is up here. It's to symbolize the thatchings on top of a yard um, in memory of the Kyrgyz people who died serving the Soviet Union in the Second World War. And we've seen Khrushchevkas, but this building over here is um, called Stalinka, named after Joseph Stalin who championed the uh, architectural movement of much more ornate and neoclassical styles like the uh, famous um, apartment complex that housed the Soviet um, political elite in Moscow um, post-production Alex post put a photo here and so yeah it's uh, like neoclassicalism on steroids very ornate and nice looking um, then slowly brutalism took over when uh, Stalin died and Khrushchev took over and Brezhnev with Brezhnevkas. Brezhnevkas are the same as Khrushchevkas but much taller, the much higher skyscrapers um, that dominate a lot of the um, Soviet cities in uh, Russia such as Moscow, St. Petersburg. Here we have a uh cheeky statue of Pushkin, the uh, Russian poet, right behind a lovely brutalist communist, uh, I think it's a university. Here is one of the tallest buildings in Bishkek, it's about 18 stories and it's a experimental Soviet uh, block of flats. A little pretty uh, funky design. And here we have the State Museum of Kyrgyzstan in Alatul Square. This was once called uh, Lenin Square, but uh, after the independence, they changed it to Alatul. And uh, independence day was actually just a few days ago, uh, the 31st of August. And these are the national heroes of Kyrgyzstan who fought for independence. Yeah, it's good. Good party on the 31st if uh, you have in Kyrgyzstan. Come for their independence day. It's a good laugh. And here we have the White House. At top, Kyrgyz World Pobitsya. Who says America uh, is the only one with the White House? This is where the president uh, does his job in the parliament. In Kyrgyzstan, the freest democracy in Central Asia. And here we have the uh, Palace of Sports. Because that's where uh, Soviets trained all their athletes for the Olympics. And this statue is Kozhumkul. Kozhum Kul. He is, uh, according to Kyrgyz mythology, he uh, carried his horse across the frozen mountains when um, the animal could not himself um, walk himself. Here we have the Philharmonic uh, Hall. And yet another war memorial in Kyrgyzstan. We go and fight for communism, it says, with some uh, glorious golden Kyrgyz soldiers. And here we have the monument for stellar friendship between nations, symbolizing the uh, eternal friendship of the nations in the USSR. Um, you could say it wasn't um, 
a choice uh, friendship since, you know, they kind of got persuaded to join the USSR by uh, the Red Army, but... At least it got a nice statue after it. And the below symbolizes um, all the nations of the USSR together as one united under communism. Last but not least, we have the Osh Bazaar. Named after Osh, the city in the south, which also has a very famous bazaar. This is a, well, a large bazaar really, so let's go take a look. Osh Bazaar, Dobro Pujalovat. dried fruits or spices or anything. This is where you go in uh, Bishkek, to the Osh Bazaar. Looks like uh, I came a bit too late and everything is uh, closing up. It's around six o'clock, it's a bit late. Unfortunately, I had a long day walking around Bishkek, but finally made it to the last but not least part of uh, Soviet Bishkek. Thank you. 